Well, a good morning to you, alive people. Happy Sunday, the second Sunday of the year. Just wanted to pray and open up today. God, we thank you for this new year. We're still in the first week of that new year. We thank you for new starts. We thank you for uh, new mornings, God, that your mercies are new every morning is what the word says. And so we thank you for the mercy of, for today. We bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We give you the honor and the glory today for we have nothing, God, that we can bring you that's of any worth in comparison to what you give us. But we ask God for your blessing on our life, our fa the favor of God on our life. We know that comes in different ways, not just materially, God, but it comes in <clears throat> ways spiritually. It comes in ways of peace. It comes in ways of um, being able to persevere in hardships, God. It comes in different uh, facets. And so we just submit to you, God, whatever you want today, Lord. What do you want us to do today? How would you have us spend our our time, our hours, our days in this year we ask for your blessing. We ask for healing and health for every person watching. We ask for, God, your provision in ways that they can't even imagine. We ask that we would walk by faith and not by sight. We'd be those that see miracles. Sometimes we don't see them because we're walking by sight and we don't understand the miracle that's just happened, but we want to walk by faith and understand what you're doing in our life today. We thank you. We bless you. God, use us for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, just wanted to um, open up to Matthew. I know we're gonna we're gonna be um, fasting a few days uh, this this um, this month, uh, three days. So next Friday, Saturday, or I'm sorry, next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are gonna be our fasting days. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, let me rewind that. Let me just start over. Okay. Um, so not this next, but the following, um, the following weekend, I'll get you the exact dates. I think it's around the 21st, but, um, we're going to be fasting that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So not this weekend, but the weekend after that, we'll do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we'll do a Google meet for church on that Sunday. So we can come together and pray together and share testimonies through the fast and also, we will have some prayer times through that three days of fasting as well. So mark your calendars for not this Thursday, uh, but the following Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, we will be fasting. And for today's message, I wanted to open up to Matthew 25. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and open up to that. Matthew 25, 14, it's the parable of the talents. And I'm really excited to share from parables and have thought maybe um, for a portion of this year really focus in on the parables that Jesus shared. I think it's important for us to really understand and know why Jesus shared certain stories and why he shared these parables, why he shared these um, nuggets of wisdom within the parables. And so um, we're going to dive into those uh, for a section of this year. Maybe it'll go the whole year. I'm not sure because um, the parables are so deep and wide and um, we can read them on the surface and know what the surface says, but going a little bit deeper is helpful in our in our walk with the Lord just to understand more of how Jesus shared when he was on earth gives us a little bit of insight of how God thinks, how Jesus thinks. They're one and the same and so we want to walk in that wisdom that he shared. But I'm just going to kind of... Um, touch on this parable today and then maybe come back to it another time. Um, but I really felt for this year that we are to be those that use what God has given us. And so let's read in Matthew, starting in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. It says, for it will be like a man going on a journey. This is talking about the kingdom of God. It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded them, traded with them, and he made five talents more. 
So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scatter no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given and he will have abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <clears throat> a pretty intense teaching and parable from Jesus about kind of the concept, the takeaway of it is you use it or you lose it. You use what you've been given or you'll lose what you've been given if you don't use it. And this season... I believe God is calling you and I to use what he's given us, to not worry about what everyone else has. You know, that that third servant who got the one talent, I'm sure, thought, well, I didn't get five talents or I didn't get two talents. I don't know if they were even in the same room when they got these talents, but I imagine they were. Um, I imagine that they were all called in together and... They went their way, and I'm sure the the person with one talent in their mindset was, you know what, I only have one. So if I lose this, then I'm I'm going to lose everything. Where the guy with the five talents probably, who knows, because the master came over a long period of time, maybe he invested two or three at first and realized, oh, I'm I'm gaining some some interest here, and so. Maybe he held on to two or three of the talents, or maybe he invested it all at once <clears throat> and gained five more. But I'm sure the mindset of the one talent person was, if I mess up, if I lose out, if I use this and lose it, then my master is going to be very upset. And I think we have to stop looking around and saying, well, once I have more income or once I have more time or once I have more virtue in my life or once I have this area set up, then I will begin to give God what is rightfully his or I'll serve him with all my heart or I'll give him the time that, that I know I need to be giving him. We cannot think like that in these times that we're living in. We cannot live like that servant who had one talent. We need to understand that the Lord gives us talents or ability. The, the talents were given to these three people according to their ability. So it had something to do tied in with the ability that God had gifted them with. They had an ability, maybe it was an ability of faith, ability of, of uh, business and investing. And maybe there was an ability to um, take care of things well and maybe this master Saul and these servants, that these are my top three. 
These are my top three guys. They know how to take care of things. They know how I think. They know how I um, respond. They know what I want done with this. And it's kind of evident with the third one talking about, I knew that you you reap in fields that you haven't sown in. And, and he knows how his master thinks, but he missed something. He missed using his talent. And I wonder if there's talents today in you and I that one, we, we know we have, and we just haven't had the faith or, or the hope or the clear direction on how to develop or increase that talent. Or maybe you've received a talent in, in your life and you, you see yourself as maybe the five talent person and you have doubled those and you have increased those and that's, Hey, that's well done. Great, great job. Good and faithful servant. But I know that we all can see ourselves in all three of these people. I think many times Jesus shares multiple um, scenarios or multiple personalities or people in a story is because at some point in our life, we may um, identify with with that kind of a a scenario more than the other, and so you might be in an in a season of life where yeah you're you're the five talent person, and you've invested well, and you've you're you're seeing the the reward of investing well. You might be like the two person talent, maybe not as much as the five person, but you've doubled what you've had, and you've and I'm not just talking money, but you've doubled. And, and you've you've developed your giftings and your talents and your understanding. You've developed it well. And, and now you're in a great season and you're moving forward. And, and some of us might find ourselves in the one talent ca- category right now. Because it didn't matter if this guy had one talent, ten talents, or three. Um, I mean, I think the number does have something to do with it. But it, it goes to show that this guy had a... A hard time investing. He had a hard time stepping out in faith. He had a hard time saying, you know what? All I've been given is this one, but I'm going to do the best that I can. And, and I'm going to trust that, that what I do with this is going to turn out the way it needs to for the benefit of my life and for the master. And that is I think where a lot of us <clears throat> find ourselves in a season like this. Now, like I said, you might feel like the five talent person, the, the two talent person, a lot more often than not, I personally feel like the one talent person. Like there's there's that one thing that I can't let go of, or there's that one thing that I haven't developed, or there's that one area in my life that... I'm, I'm unsure how to get enough faith stirred up and mustered up so that I can step out and see something happen for the kingdom of God or see something happen in a fresh new way and, 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 and see that take place. Well, you know, the Bible calls us God's field. And it's kind of interesting. The Bible says that we are his field. We are his workmanship. We're, we're his field. We're 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 the field god god sows a seed into us whether it's 1 2 5 or 1000 and what do fields what are fields supposed to do they're supposed to reap a harvest they're supposed to produce something so if we're god's field and he has sown a seed into us he's given us a talent he's given us a vision he's given us an ability. He's given us a spiritual gift. He's given us the ability to do something. Then that seed that he has sown into us is supposed to produce something. And I know this is kind of can cause anxiety for some of us. It does for me at times. Like, God, if you've given me these things and why don't you start watering them? Why don't you start showing me how to use this? And and God wants us to know that, yes, he's given us some things, but we're called to step out in faith at times and invest time into the talent, invest 
energy into producing what God has called us to produce. And he comes alongside and he knows what he's given us. He knows what he's given us will produce a fruitful harvest. And so he wants faith from us. The way we honor God is by faith. By faith, Abraham pleased the Lord. He stepped out when he did not know where he was going, but he knew God told him to go. That was the, the seed, the, the seed planted in that conversation was go to this land that I've called you to. He didn't know where it was. He didn't know what was going to happen, but the seed was to go. The seed was to take a journey, start traveling and, and begin to go. And we can, we can compromise and, and, and begin to say, well, if I only knew the direction I was supposed to go, or I only knew um, the what the land was going to produce at least the first year so I could plan out the first year and then know how much I need to save and and then uh, what I can carry over into the other year. And, and, and we do this so often as we, we keep waiting and we bury what God has given us along the way. We've buried things. We've buried things years ago that we've just kind of given up on or we've buried things recently or we've said, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't even want to pursue that because I, I'm afraid that I'll lose um, everything I've built so far. I'm afraid that I'll lose um, my, my comfort zone. And so we have to have an attitude of faith this year that says yes to being those who who multiply what God has given us. And again, this this is not just finances, not just money. It's multiply the giftings and the callings that God has given us. And that might be that we we need to spend time in prayer. That might be we need to spend time developing that that prayer life that we've buried along the way or we've kind of hit and miss along the way and haven't developed it to the point of truly all that God has has called you to. Maybe it's taking a Bible class or understanding the Bible in a fresh new way and taking time to study it maybe one night a week because you feel like you you need the the wisdom of the Lord to share with people that you run into, but you just have not developed it yet. And and you're kind of afraid that you're not going to develop it in the right way and that you'll you'll miss the mark. And the Lord says, just just step out and do it. Maybe, maybe take an online class if you need help kind of deciphering which one. Um, I'm I know of a, a few Bible colleges that that have some great classes or or even some free classes that you could take whatever you'd want but there's there's a calling on your life and there's a purpose for your life maybe it's outside of um of just knowing things and 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 prayer because obviously we all need to be praying we all need to be in the word but maybe there's a ministry opportunity that God has called you to. Maybe he planted a seed in you during a season of your life that said, man, I have a heart for those people, or man, I have a heart to, to help in that, um, arena of, of business or of, of the medical field or whatever it might be. I have a heart to reach people who are going through this scenario, or I have a heart to, um, to volunteer at this local, outreach that is doing amazing things for the kingdom. Maybe you have a heart to do that and you've just kind of buried it over time because time management has been hard. Discipline has been hard. Family life maybe has has been overwhelming. Maybe your finances aren't 100% where you, where you want them to be, which I don't think in this life they might never be. I'm not saying that in, in that you'll lack, you will not lack, but we always want so much more than we actually need. God has given us what we need. We have to steward that and do it well. And if we're doing well with the little that he's given us, as this parable says, he will give us more. 
And so instead of worrying and fretting about, oh, you know, my finances aren't this, this, and this, maybe we need to step out in faith and do the thing that God has put on our heart. And along the way, gain wisdom of how to operate with what we do have and believe that God is going to multiply that. I don't know about you, but it, it's a challenging word. It's 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 something that I wasn't planning on on sharing when I was thinking about the message after last week's message. I was just inspired and encouraged to share this because I think the Holy Spirit wants to impart something to us today, and that's a faith to use what we've been given. Because if you don't use what you've been given, it'll be taken from you and given to someone who who already has and and already has abundance and it's a, it's a hard thing to process it's a hard thing to kind of understand like why would god do that to me why would god take the little talent that i have and 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 give that away to the one who has more because god honors faith he honors faith. And if there's things I've learned along this journey is that there's times that I am more logically and practically thinking than faith thinking. Now, does faith require all logic and practicality to go out the window? I don't think so. I think there's wisdom wisdom goes hand in hand with faith. God is a God of wisdom and a God of order and a God of practical steps to see um, things happen. He's the God who designed the seasons. You know, God planted planted the trees in the garden. He planted the 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 shrubs in the garden. He planted the fruit bearing trees in the garden, and He invested something into creation so that. It would produce season after season that there would be seasons where it doesn't produce. There's seasons that fruit trees don't produce. But the the idea of 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 growing comes from a season of sowing and comes from a season of of purpose and 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 development and moving forward, even when you don't see the end result continuing to invest what God has given you. And so I believe God wants us to grow and grow spiritually and not just stay stagnant and to grow into a a person who is a person who knows that faith is the substance of the things unseen. It doesn't mean we have the power. God has the power to speak things into existence. We have the ability to come alongside him and to walk the walk of faith. He's walking with you. He's with you. He will not forsake you. And I just want to continue to encourage you today that he's given you something to use. And this is the year. This is the time. This is the place to begin to maybe one, search out, say, Lord, I don't feel like I've been given much, but but what would you have me do? We pray a lot, Lord, I need you to do this for me and I need you to do that for me and I need this to work out. But this year, if we pray more often, God, what would you have me do this year? Let your kingdom come, your will be done. Praying that that um, the Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, that's asking for something, but give give me what i need so i can i can walk things out in faith and step out in faith and and begin to develop what you've called me to develop and like i said i you know i just kind of kind of skimming everything that's in this parable and we'll dive into it at another time but i really believe that we need to have this understanding as we've entered into this first week of this new year is that we need to use what god has given us and he will be faithful to pour back into us. He'll be faithful to 
to honor that faith, that you've stepped out in faith, that you've developed something in your life, that you know he's called you to, that you know that there's a ministry burning in your heart, you know that there's something you need to do, and he's now given this thing to you, and he's asking you to develop it, to do the best you can. And don't do it alone. Come along other, come alongside others. Come alongside those who've maybe been there before, who've taken a step similar to the one you're contemplating taking. Ask wisdom from those. Hey, how did you develop the gifts of God in your life? How do you? I see that you have this gift and I really sense that I maybe have something similar. How did you develop that? And, and what was the journey you went on? What was the first step? And and that's the thing is take one step at a time. You don't conquer a journey by, by leaping from point A to point B. And that's how you've conquered it. No, you, you take one step at a time. It's not a giant leap. It's, it's a step. It's a step of consistency, a step of faithfulness, a step of stepping out in faith. That first step is always scary. And sometimes the other steps are too, but God is faithful and wants to take us on a journey that is us growing and us seeing a harvest. And as we invest our time, our energy, our talents, our time, our treasure, and our talents, that we would see an increase. I really believe for that this year, that we would see an increase and that we would see the Lord's hand on everything we step out in faith for him to do. Because he's worthy of our time, our treasure, and our talents. He's worthy of everything because it's already his anyways. He's given it us, he's given it to us anyways. And just like the person who had the one talent, I want to pray that we would not live by fear. He was afraid of what his master would do if he lost it all. So I want to pray against fear, <clears throat> and I want to pray faith, that even if we just have a little, we would be faithful over the little, and we would see much growth in that in this next season. So why don't, wherever you are, why don't you just bow your head, close your eyes, and just think about what God has given you. And you don't have to do a, a, a in-depth inventory right now, but just think of what God has given you. And there might be something that comes to your mind or maybe something later this week will come to your mind or maybe something during the fast will come to your mind. But just think for a moment and, and I'll, I'll be quiet here for a moment so you can think, but just think about what God has given you. Like I said, maybe there's something that came to mind. Maybe not yet, and that's okay. But I just want to pray for each and every one of us that we would have faith to walk out the things that God wants us to develop in this time and in this season. And that we would not be bound by fear. <clears throat> we would not bury what the Lord has given us. But we would go and use it. Go and multiply it. Jesus, we just thank you for today. Thank you that you are the one who gives us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. You don't give us a spirit of fear. You don't give us fear. That's something that we we constantly are fighting. That the, the enemy tries to throw in our face and we even bring up from our past experiences or maybe that's just kind of like our personality is being a little bit more timid or a little bit more reserved. And so we, we kind of can assume that <clears throat> the worst is going to happen if we try something or we can assume that we won't be able to recover what we lose if we 
if we invest something or if we try something that we will, that will be worse off for some reason. But I pray today that we'd have faith, we'd have the attitude of faith that says yes to the things of God, yes to the giftings and the callings and the abilities that you have given us, and we would say yes to developing those. Obviously, not at the cost of losing our soul to this world. We don't want to gain the whole world and lose our soul. We're not, we're not trying to gain the world here. We're, we're trying to develop what you want developed. We're trying to step out in faith in what you want us to step out in faith in. Not in what the world would say is what we need and what success is. We want to be successful when it comes to your kingdom. And so we pray for faith for everyone. I just pray an anointing of faith to go forth right now, God, in every room that everyone's watching from, whether they're watching from a car or they're on a walk or they're cleaning the house as they're listening or whatever might be going on. We pray that an anointing of faith would just hit their life right now and fear would dissipate, Lord God, that they begin to operate in faith. God, it doesn't mean we won't battle fear ever again. We will battle fear. There's there's a daily battle sometimes with fear. There's a daily battle with depressive thoughts sometimes. There's a daily battle with feeling overwhelmed and I don't have time for this or that. And there's going to be a daily struggle for time management. But we say by faith that we will have the courage to walk through that. I've heard it said, and it doesn't mean we can't pray for ease every once in a while, but I've heard it said, don't pray for an easy life. Pray for strength to live the life we've been given. And if we have that kind of attitude, even in the easy times, we'll have strength to develop what you've given us, Lord. And so we we pray, whether it's an easy or tough or very difficult time that we're going through, We'd have strength to step out in faith and to be the kind of servants that are multiplying our talents for you. It wasn't for anyone else, but for the master. They didn't do it for themselves. They didn't do it for others or for a name for themselves. They they were given the talents to develop the talents, to multiply the talents, to give back to the master. And so, God, we want to give back to you. Of course, a heart full of gratefulness and a heart full of love and and worship to you. But also we want to give back to you the things that you've given us to do in this life. We want to give back those things multiplied. And show us what those things are, Lord. Develop in us an ability to see beyond what we see, but to have eyes of faith and to know that you're with us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Well, I know it's a challenging message for myself, and so it may be for you as well. If you um, are are being challenged by it, let let us know. Let us know. Reach out to us. Text me. Um, say, hey, I need some prayer because I really want to know like how to how to take steps in this season for um, for just this challenge of of using what God's given us, and and let's 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 pray for each other. Let's walk together. And let's not um, just be overwhelmed in our in our thinking, but let's reach out and see what God may do in, in and through us in this next season. And so I'm excited for this new year. It's um, it's definitely a lot of change has happened leading into this new year for a lot of people. And I know that change is always on the horizon, but we just thank God for what he's given us today. His mercies are new for today. And he's given us a day to live out his purposes. And so God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you next Sunday. 